Hello students, in this video we are going to learn about design and retaining of retaining walls and um, after this uh, video you should be able to classify the loads which are coming into the retaining wall and what are the probable collapses which you can expect from a retaining wall and how to uh, control these deformations by by selecting some suitable concrete material or <coughs> steel and uh, uh, how to detail those with the relevant uh, uh, relevant uh, or detailing from the relevant code books so that all we are going to learn in this lecture first of all I'll go through uh, <clears throat> what is a retaining wall a retaining wall is is nothing but a, a simply a wall so which is intended to used or the constructed to just store or uh, is safeguard a soil which is behind it normally it is retaining wall as you can see in highways uh, where you wanted to have a elevated highway the, the 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 formation level is here and the normal ground level is somewhere here if you want to elevate it to, to a height then you go for a retaining wall where you retain a soil there and then this retaining wall takes all the forces which are coming from the soil so uh, you know it's not just that we can use this uh, retaining wall but uh, highways only we can also use this for uh, aesthetically for landscaping works also so typically uh, we we do design a cantilever retaining wall where we project the retaining wall into the soil in order to have uh, uh, the stability condition so this is what are the stability conditions we'll soon next see in the next few slides so, so these are all the names which are which we can see in a retaining wall it's a batter this is the backfill stem this is drainage hole where the drainage from the water or the water whatever is coming from the backfill we can drain it to this this side and this side is called storm and this is called heel and key is normally provided if this wall moves to this side due to this force this key will uh, resist uh, the, the the sliding process which is coming so the the pillow portion is called as a base these are the normally <coughs> the uh, constructed uh, retaining wall this is a retaining wall of a stone masonry and this is a retaining wall which is used uh, for a road so this is totally a concrete retaining wall so normally uh, the retaining walls are classified into a gravity which is gravity wall so gravity wall basically it's totally of weight uh, it will resist all the forces so it's normally a masonry wall whether you can have a stone masonry or a brick masonry and plain concrete which is not reinforced at all then you have when you introduce a reinforcing then normally you go either for a cantilever retaining wall or a counter for retaining wall so I've just shown you in the previous slide this is a cantilever retaining wall it looks like this and then we have a counter for retaining wall which looks like this where you provide a counter force uh, towards it this is the gravity retaining wall and then we have counter force and this is the buttress retaining wall it's a buttress a small wall type of a construction is done along the length portion of the retaining wall and this is is the backfill and that wall is towards the opposite direction that is called as a buttress wall and if the same wall is constructed towards the back wall, then it's called as a counterfoot wall the, the difference is that so please um, ensure that um, uh, the small small differences will uh, uh, are uh, very important when you are bifurcating two types of retaining walls then you have uh, this uh, uh, what are the forces which are responsible for the failures of the retaining wall is the first thing is first pressure we have already studied in the geotechnical engineering so what are the what is a pressure what is a net pressure 
so what are the classifications of the pressures and all those things we are we have uh, two types of forces which is active with pressure and uh, and the passive with pressure so active with pressure is a pressure where you can expect the uh, wall moving away from the back wheel and this is the 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 for diagram whatever i've shown here this is for the active earth pressure where you are opposite have, where you have a passive earth pressure passive earth pressure is a is a pressure where you can expect wall coming towards it this happens when the soil is cohesive soil for example clay kind of a soil so you know these are the two type basically two types and you have so many theories you have uh, uh many theories uh you have studied in geodetic we we directly apply here and we calculate the forces uh per meter length along and we uh calculate the stability conditions and their own we can go we will see in the next video so the at the pressure if you the the be the based upon the at the pressure we decide to which type of retaining wall we wanted to have so if you have a huge uh, at the pressures where you have a huge height of a retaining wall then we normally go for counter force and buttresses because the 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 stability itself the main criteria when you have a huge huge height and when height is not that much high uh, not that much when you compare with length so then then we can go for a normal l shaped uh, retaining wall so the the all depends upon the height uh, height uh, directly says that it's an uh, for example if you are talking um, i'll just write down here so normally p is defined as a pressure whether you can take an active at the pressure or a passive at the pressure it's defined as w into h square so you have already started this is the pressure diagram which they have uh, here have drawn here this is the wh what where w stands for the density of the soil and uh, and this is the height of the retaining wall so the area of itself is that so it's multiplied by half so half h into wh will give you this value which is at the pressure if you substitute the values h in meters Sorry, uh, you can't see that, right? Okay, change the color of the pen, right? Okay, so the value of W is in kilonewtons, and the value of H is in meters. Then your values will be in kilonewton meter square. Sorry, per. So, for every area, how much is the pressure? that you can calculate so we'll go through the next slide <laughs> so you know the, the base the, the pressure totally depends upon the soil conditions based upon the soil conditions uh, it, we can define it so for the first condition is the dry if you have a backfield you can have a different pressure when you have a moist when with some water content in the soil when uh, when the submerged level by when you expect this water content in the soil to 100 percent so all the voids are filled up with water then it's called as submerged when you expect this then it's called a submerged uh, level the back with the uniform such as when you when you have a retaining wall right and then you have a soil here and when you have a pressure it is coming from a UDL or some kind of a load this is a load an extra load. so this extra load is normally called as a surcharge 
so if you have that kind of a situation then the the earth pressure which you are calculating differs when you compare without uh, the, this thing uh, such charge and when you have a the same backfill uh, with um, you have a retaining wall here and then you have a retaining wall here and rather than having a straight and you know, if you have an inclined sloping surface with some inclination let me say that as it alpha alpha decrease with the horizontal then that is a sloping surface so we have different categories so I've already explained it to you this we have already studied in previous classes in the next video will uh, this is the coefficient of um, uh, active earth pressure so we'll go through all these things and uh, We'll see the stability requirements of it in the next video and uh, perhaps a continuation of the design. Thank you.